make way back to your seat. Let's see, everyone grab a hand, look at here on the page 323. 323. Standing together. Good morning! And welcome to Grandview Park Baptist Church. Just glad to see you here out in the parking lot on Facebook, YouTube, and we're going to be trying to uh, get things worked out where maybe we can get inside and, and outside too. We'll be doing both, I'm sure, but we're going to meet next week and, and discuss this and how we're going to do it. So the main thing I'd like to ask you is for your cooperation and your support, just like you have been through all of this. And I do have something to announce. Uh, and and uh, J.R. Max Heimer is going to be our chairman of the Deacons this next year. D Dustin is, is uh, not going to be the chairman. He's still on there. The same Deacons is there. And if you need any of us, you know to call. And, and we'll help you any way we can. We have this, you know, rotated off right now. They're not off. You're always a Deacon. And they're here to serve you. But I want to share this with you too, if I may. And uh, a lot of you, you know, this view and stuff, I know you maybe you'd like to give to the, this church, its local assembly, and our missions. And the address is 117 Melview Road, Lenore, North Carolina, 28648. And uh, if you'd like to give, you're more than welcome to. Need to give opportunities to do that. That's the hardest thing I ever do is ask for money because I just think the people that are saved are going to give. Amen? Because if you're saved, you know that God gave His Son to save your life. And He's the one that gave you your job and everything that you have. So you need to realize that and give back for the glory of God. And I can assure you of one thing. Any money that comes into Grandview Park Baptist Church goes back out. And it goes back out to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I do have some special prayer requests that I'd like to call out their names. Earl Wall, one of our members, he's got the COVID and he's he's in uh, critical care. Uh, they had to put a trach in and, and he's in responsive and he's a very sick man. So we need to pray for him, his dear wife Debbie, and that whole family. And also I got a text yesterday uh, or, or this morning. Pat Bentley has had a heart attack. Let's be praying for her. Uh, Brenda Phillips, she has the COVID and she's getting ready to be put on a respirator. She's not doing good at all. Her grandfather has it and her husband and three-year-old son. So we need to be very much in prayer about all this stuff. It's real, but it's like what we were talking about a while ago. We all need to just be as careful as we can. Sometimes you can be as careful as you can and still get something like that. But listen, we've got to pray and we've got to lift up all this to the Lord. I have a special surprise for you today. It may not be a surprise. If those of you here, you've probably seen them. But also, uh, Dusty, my son-in-law, is preaching at Poplar Grove, so we need to be remembering him and uh, all the preachers and all the local churches. So let's humble our hearts to the Lord at this time, and let's call on him. Father God, I come to you right now as humbly as I know how. And Father, I want to thank you so much for the call on my life to preach your gospel. Father, I'm doing the best I know how. And I'm not doing it alone. I'm using the folks here in the church and trying to uh, see what we need to do. This is uncharted ground, so we're just doing the best we know how to keep our elders safe and other folks safe. But, Father God, we, we want to thank you that we know that you are in charge. And, Lord, help us to always use that common sense. We pray for those in the schools, Lord. We lift that up to you, God. I pray for Earl Laws. I pray for Debbie. I pray for the whole family, Lord. I just lift them up to you. This has to touch them. And I know you're capable. I pray for the one that had the heart attack. I pray for the other family that's got that. The one that's going on the respirator. Lord, I pray for them. But not only them. I pray for all of them that work in the hospitals and the, and the first responders and all these folks. And Father God, I just want to thank you for an opportunity to sing to you, Lord, and an opportunity to be with my grandchildren here. And Father, just bless them, help them to sing out. And Lord, help me to preach your word and get us prepared. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen and amen. If you have your Bible there, I know sometimes in the car or whatever, it's a little hard to find your place. We're going to be uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Ephesians chapter 2 is in the New Testament, verses 19 through 22. Now just hold on and bear with me for just a moment. Girls, come on up here. Come on. Let's get it. Got to roll. We're rolling. Come on. Stand right here. You good? You sure? Okay. Here's your mic. 
microphone. Say hello out there. Okay, come on, Ray. All right. Are you good there, Allie? You want me to get closer? You want to get closer? Stand still, Ray. How about that? Got it? Okay. All right. All right, Ray. Can you get that out of your mouth and tell them hello? Say hello. 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 All right. Well, now we're going to sing Best Thing Ever Happened to Us, right? Hold that mic about right here and you sing into it now. Okay, ready? You've been. Or something of that 
are no more strangers and foreigners, foreigners but fe fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building built and framed together uh, uh, grow up into a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now. I just ask you to hide me behind the cross and Father God, help me to stay focused on what I'm to be focused about and ask you, Lord, and sharing you with everybody I can working on Raymond Spann's sin and repenting of that sin and it is sin. It ain't shortcoming. It's sin. Dealing with my heart. Dealing with my life. Helping my wife. Helping my children. Helping my grandchildren and helping the world come to Christ Father God, I have a small part in this world, but I've got a big God. And I thank God that I have you in my heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, help me, if anything else, to be steadfast. Help me to be thankful. Help me to teach others how to be that way. Help me to not let nothing bother me or stray me in any way. Left, uh, left field or right field to stay straight in the middle with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Dustin Hartsong said, said over there in Joshua chapter number five. Whatever and said, are you for me or against me? Listen, we're going to be for the Lord if we're going to survive. The Lord is the Lord and He is right. So help us to believe that with all of our heart and help us to hear what the Word of God teaches us here today. Hide me behind the cross that you'll be high and lifted up. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for blessing us. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name, I do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Let's look again now in verse number 19a. And think about this. The first one, a new nation or society. Look at here in our text, if you will. In verse 19, now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Let's think about this. From strangers and foreigners to fellow citizens. What a deal. Listen to me. I once was a sinner. You once was a sinner lost and headed for hell. But now you're a fellow citizen with Jesus Christ and all the people that have given their heart to the Lord that's ever been and given their heart to the Lord. The word stranger, think about this, means an outsider or unknown person. The word foreigner means a sojourner or alien. Think about it. We was alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, the God, the one true God. And I want you to know something. Israel was to teach us that. Think about that. And they didn't teach us that. Think about this. Gentiles, that's what we are. We was without Christ, without citizenship, without covenants, without hope, without God. The Jew was to teach us, but kept the rules. Listen to me today. A lot of times these local churches are more busy trying to come up with some kind of rule instead of trying to lead somebody to Christ. Most people do what most people do. We're saved people and we're supposed to act like we're saved. We're supposed to tell them about Jesus Christ in our life and how we walk and how we talk and how we live. We need to do that. Why? We're fellow citizens. Fellow citizens, if you will. But, but now, we who believe our fellow citizens with all God's people. We have a home in heaven. Think about this. Note the word saints. It means a, a people set apart for God. Fellow citizens of people being built into a new nation under God himself. Now, think about this. A new nation under God. I want you to understand something. If you've been saved, you're supposed to be a new nation. You're supposed to be a new creation. You're supposed to be a pilgrim in this world. This world shouldn't be meaning so much to you. May I submit to you, the people of the world should mean a lot to you. They should mean enough to you to let them know where your citizenship is and let them know what God's kingdom is going to stand for. And if you see any platform out there that, that does not stand for what God says, you do not need to vote for that. Brother Raymond, you mentioned in politics? No. This is the highest court in the land. This is the highest meeting you could ever be in. This is the meeting of the Lord Jesus Christ, His children. This is a new nation. And I want you to know something. His kingdom is going to come. And His kingdom is going to reign. One nation under God. And I want you to know these people that swear in the new public service today on Dr. Seuss's books instead of the Holy Bible. 
on one occasion, I had to stand up for the red flag, even to a lost man, a lost woman. There's something wrong. What? Lost people is trying to take over this great nation that's under God. That's what you should be seeing, Brother Raymond. Are you just seeing it blinded? No, ma'am, no, sir. Have you done that, Brother? Let me just tell him just a little bit. Jesus Christ is the light. Them that know Jesus Christ, his light reveals sin. Whose sin does it reveal? Mine. My sin. Whenever I deal with my sin, and I call it sin, and I repent of my sin, I can see sin. A lover and it breaks my heart. Why? Wow, they have souls. Same as me. But they have a choice. And the line's being drawn in the sand. Listen. We're near the life stage. I know that if it's a thousand years, it's near the life stage. And I want you to know something. They still lost people out there that need to hear the word of God. And we need to tell them they ain't no other way to go except by Jesus. And if they receive Jesus, they need to deal with their sin. If the moon calls it sin, it is sin today in 2020. And in time life in 2030, it'll be sin. And it needs to be dealt with by the blood of the Lamb that died for all sin. That's how you make fellow citizens with the saints. Could you imagine? Could you imagine telling one of these, these people that lived back then that there was no Jesus and we can live any way we want to? Listen to me. They would tell you, listen, you must be born again. You must be saved. And they would show you how to do it. And they live their life in such a way. We're a new nation of people. We're a new creation. We're a society a set apart that's going to last forever. If you're the church. If you really believe that Jesus Christ died for you and rose again on the third day. Now, let's look at verse number 19b. I don't want to live on a sad note there, but the truth's the truth, and the truth shall make you free of God's family. You're part of God's family. Look with me here in 19b, and the Bible says Jesus Christ himself. I'm sorry, uh, verse number 19. And of the household of God. I'm sorry, God's family. I can't see you in a top cry to a, a, the household of God. You're part, you've got a home. Listen to me. We, we, we have been adopted. I don't know if there's anybody out there listening to me that is adopted or anything of that nature. Amen. I, I got one in here raising their hand that's doing the, 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 the Facebook thing. She's adopted. Listen, they can't give you back, honey. Amen. If you've been adopted, then you can't give them away. I don't you to know something. God has adopted us if we have believed in Him. And even if we have not believed in Him, He sent His Son to die for the lost sinner. He's the Savior of the lost, just like He's the Savior of the saved. We went over that. But think about that. You are adopted. Think about it. We, we are experiencing God's family. And I want you to know something. I miss seeing you all. I miss hugging you all. I miss being in here with you all. Don't you never think I don't miss that. I miss going to church six, seven times a week. I miss it with a passion. But I know that i got to be saved too. And, and, and we're experiencing uh, uh, God's family of love and, and care and interest and concern and help and provision and protection and compassion, uh, uh, compassion uh, she, uh, and, and, and training. And I want to tell you something. A lot of times people get saved and then they don't come for the training. If you get saved, I want you to know whenever we can, you need Sunday school. You need to be there. You need to be able to ask questions and be a part of it. Preaching is a different thing. It's hard to stop me and ask a question. Why? Because God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them which is lost. First Corinthians chapter number 1. Not foolish preaching, but it's foolishness to the lost man. And we've got to keep on trucking because a lot of times the lost man is just as quick to get out as he is to get in. And I'm sad to say that there's a lot of people that say that their church is quick to get in and wants quick to get out. Think about this. Every person in the household has duties to perform. Do you realize you have a duty to perform? Well, Brother Raymond, I can't play the piano. I can't play the organ or the bass guitar. And I can't pray. And I sure can't teach. Show up. <laughs> Show up. At your first duty. Show up. Listen with your ears. Looking with your eyes. You might need to pick up a piece of paper. <laughs> Is that important? 
course it is. Some grouchy religious person to gripe about it. <laughs> but nevertheless, get it up. Look around. Who's in need? Pay your tithe. Give 10% of what you make for the glory of God. Start with the basics. And whenever you start with the basics, you'll start realizing you're part of the family. You'll start seeing people in need. And you'll start telling them about the Lord. You'll start telling them how God brought you out of your sin and your trouble. And how you still have trouble in this world. But you have great joy. Why? Because you got great peace. Because you made peace with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we, we all are to build up and strengthen the family of God. We all are to, to try our best. Listen, if you hear some kind of smut on somebody, you just heard it. Brother Raymond, I believe that just on Facebook is the gospel. If they're reading the book that I'm reading and they're sharing Jesus Christ, that's the gospel. Anything else is what she said or her said, okay? Or he said, okay? Keep that in mind. And even if you hear it, confront it and make sure they, they know that, that, that somebody's item. Make sure that you let them know and you let them know how much God loves us all and how God died for us and sent Jesus to die for us at Calvary and He rose again victorious over death, hell and the grave. Don't be condemning. Listen, you're condemned already if you're lost. But if you're saved, you're supposed to be encouraging to the household of God. These are your brothers and sisters, and you're to do the best, best you possibly can. Now look with me in the second part of, of verse number 20, if you will. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. God's building. You're part of God's building. Oh, Brother Raymond, I, I, I know whenever I come in. Now listen to me. You've got to quit thinking natural. We're talking about the building of the church. And the church is his body. If you wouldn't mind, look over here in chapter number 1, verse 22. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, and filled all in all. Now think about this, if you will. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. He is the first of God's new movement. You want a new movement? Move towards Jesus, amen. I promise you, it'll be new to you. Why would it be new to me, Brother Ralph? Because we are sinners, Raymond Span, congregation. Whenever you move into his spot, you'll be a new movement for you. It's called the New Testament. If he was removed, the church would collapse. If you, if, so think about a natural building. If you take the stone that holds it up out, the whole building will fall no matter how good it's built. It will fall. I will tell you something. Jesus Christ will never be took out. He'll never be done away with. He will come back someday and that chief cornerstone will roll over this sinful world and grind it to powder. If you listen to me, you listen to me good. You either for him or you're against him. No. Christ, no church. I will tell you something, some local churches, if they can entertain them with their music and they can dangle them with their internet from the pulpit, they'll have church every day. What is that? Just like a Ruotan meeting. Just like a farming meeting. Just like any other kind of meeting. But whenever you meet with God, there's conviction and there's thankfulness and there's love and there's restoration. And there's repentance whenever you meet in the name of Jesus and you really meet in that name. That's the church that's going to heaven. Therefore, it is an absolute necessity that he and he alone be preached, taught, and this is the key. Lived out in the lives that preach and teach. Them that stand up and read a text and try their best to tell you what that text that says. They better be a showing up. They better be a going out. And they better be a doing what it says. Brother Raymond, why? That just ain't my thing. Listen to me. That's not the world's thing. And that's not the flesh thing. But that's God's thing. What did Jesus do? Did he just sit around and teach everybody? Heaven's not. He taught them. Then he got up and he went with them. He went with them from town to town. He went with them when they ridiculed him. He went with them when they out there on the sea. He went with them. And it's time that the pastor and the deacon and the teacher and the local assembly go and tell people about Jesus to the word of God.
about what color the carpet is or what time is the building going to be done. Lord help, you are the building. Get out there and be the building. And let people know who you stand in for, building. Let's go on. It must be preached, taught, lived out in their lives. That's the hardest thing to do. You know why? When you're blessed to be able to preach and you're blessed to be able to teach, they think that's just all there is to it. Okay, I'm done. I did good. And they do do good. But you let them get out in public. You let them, whenever things is hard, see how they act. See how they talk. See how they bring up their children. You know, there's a verse in the Bible, and I think it's over in Ephesians there. It says, Fathers bring up the children in the way that you grow. I think that's in the song, but there's another note there of the admiration of the Lord to obey your parents, and, and fathers don't provoke them to anger. Uh, Bobby Pritchard said, It seems like in America anymore, children bring up them for your parents in the way they should go, and whenever they grow old, you'll just bury them. I thought somebody at least blow their horn on that one. Let's go. 20A. Look at the first part. And are build up, build up, up, up upon, upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ is appointed with the prophets. And, and the apostles, think about this, sweet people. Their record and testimony of the word of God is the foundation upon the church is to be laid. Dusty Bean said this, whatever he said, preach, I never thought of it. Whatever Jesus told them, to, told them to go back there and get the net when he's there feeding them, Peter went by himself. It took all of them to bring it up. He went by himself and got it and brought it in there. Well, Peter must have been strong. No, it's called being obedient to God. I want to tell you something. I've seen people in wheelchairs. I've seen people that's paralyzed. But whenever the Spirit of the Lord came into their heart, did he get up and walk and run, Raymond? <laughs> Not in the sense you're thinking. <laughs> they got up and then wheels turned to tell everybody they knew about Jesus Christ. They don't let up. They don't slow down. They may not be able to get out of their, their apartment. They may not be able to get out of their house or even out of the hospital. But God has supplied a way with a computer or a telephone. They're letting everybody know that Jesus Christ is their Lord. And they're going to go to heaven someday because of what Jesus Christ did for them. He arose victorious over death, hell and the grave. And he's coming back. They believe this. And, 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 and they understand this. And, 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 and why? Because the apostles and the prophets, I want you to understand, they live till they die. And you couldn't have beat Jesus Christ out of them. You could not have, 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 have told them anything else other than Jesus Christ crucified. Why? They knew they had a better day to come. But fourthly, if you will, in verse number 21, A, the growing building or organism, if you will. Keep in mind, this is talking about these things. Look with me. In whom all, A-L-L, -L, all means all in Greek, Hebrew, and that, the building fitly framed together groweth. The building fitly framed up. This means the building grows and grows until the Lord comes back. Brother Raymond, I, I, I've seen churches, their, their growth stop. Did you stop? Church won't grow unless you go. Church won't grow unless you tell them about Jesus. Well, preacher, what's your job? I'm going to do my part. I tell everybody I know everywhere I go. Any way I can work it in, I, I start talking about Jesus. I use the sun, the moon, the wind, the rain, the grass, anything out there. Why? He made it. He's creator. And I do everything in my power to present Jesus and lead people to Jesus. But I want to tell you something. I can't do it all, but I'm going to do my part. Are you going to do your part? Are you going to consider what God's actually called you and saved you to do? But maybe I'm too old. <laughs> really? You can take preached, I think, to his 90 some years old. Brother Rabbit, he couldn't even see. No, nope, somebody read it for him and he'd tell him about Jesus. He just kept on. But whenever he was out in public, he told him about Jesus. Even on his deathbed, he called and asked the man if he was saved on the telephone. My, my. Let me explain 
every believer within the building is a part of the building and expected to fulfill its function. Within the building, that is, every believer is a laborer, a laborer who is excited to be busy adding on to the building of the church. We are all to be bringing new stones and fitting them into the great building of God, the church. We're supposed to be bringing everybody we can to the church. Does that mean this physical building around? Oh, yes, 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 it means that too. But do you realize that you can lead them to the Lord with sweat running off of you, pulling weeds? Do you realize you can lead them to the Lord frying cheeseburgers and packing them buns together? Do you realize that God will look at you that you can do His mission? Because He calls you to do His mission. In, in Matthew 28, uh, 19 through 20, uh, I, I don't want you to just take my word for it, but the Bible says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I, Jesus, have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Amen. Brother Raymond, they say, I can't do that. I will tell you something. Go to Walmart when it's a rain and take your umbrella and lead them people out to the car with that good old umbrella and tell them how God blessed you with that good old umbrella and let God take over. You can tell somebody about Jesus anywhere you go. But fifthly, verse 21b. It's a universal temple. It's a universal uh, uh, church, if you will. Unto the holy temple in the Lord. The key to that verse is in the Lord. The gospel is open to all people everywhere. See, uh, these, they, you got a group of folks that thinks that, that only this is a going and that ain't a going. Well, that's, that's probably true in one sense, but it's their fault. It ain't God's fault. God don't fearfully, wonderfully make you to go to hell. He fearfully, wonderfully made you so you could be saved. So you could hear somebody with a tie on or not a tie on, somebody crying and a snotting and a, and a begging and a pleading for you to come to Jesus. The one that they met when they was lost in their sins. This is a whosoever salvation. Look again, do it. It said, into the holy temple in the Lord is universal. Listen, these people that can't even speak English, that speaks Japanese, uh, 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 Spanish, and everything, but they're part of my church family. They're part of my church family. Why? They have believed in the only begotten Son of God and salvation, and He is the only way and the only one to heaven, and they have called on His name and admitted Him as a sinner, and they ask Jesus to come into their heart, and they're saved, saved, saved. And in the church that I'm going with, to heaven someday, whatever. I die, or if Jesus Christ steps out of that cloud and says, Come up hither, they're good with me. And you know what? When we get there, I understand every word they say. <laughs> I don't know how long it takes me, because I'm going to be in Jesus' feet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But let's press on. Universal church. But verse number 22 in the last few seasons, the local church. The local church is the most important thing on the planet. Why, Brother Raymond? Because it's part of the whole body. Let me just share this before I read the scripture. I want you to understand something. It should mean something to you to be saved. And as you're saved, it should mean something to you to assemble together with your brothers and sisters in a local church. Well, Brother Raymond, that bunch gets my pew. Well, let's just take that pew to your house and we'll put another one in here if you love it that much. Huh. Lord, help. I, I've never seen the beat of people saying, Oh, how I love Jesus, but this is my pew, and no one on earth can sit upon it. Why? Because I'm taking it with me. Ha! Lord, hey! You know what? When we do get to come back in, you ought to thank God for any place you could sit inside this building to be with your church family. You ought to be willing to move or scoot over if somebody comes in you've never met in your life to let them sit down 
and hear one more time somebody tell them about Jesus. You ought to rejoice. Why, Brother Raymond? Because I think God's just showing that religious crowd that what they've been worshiping can stop. Amen. You're going to have to worship the Savior in all these buildings around here. There's some creatures that want a legacy of campus buildings and things of that nature. If you wouldn't care, before I read this verse, look in the mirror of your car. Look at yourself. You want to see the legacy that I want? And that's for you to look in that mirror and see the Lord working in your life. <laughs> I hope whatever I've been going on, they say about me, is he crying, snot, and begging, and pleading people to come to Jesus. And it didn't matter what they looked like, how they were living, or what they said. He wanted them to be saved, saved, saved. Brother Raymond, don't all this other stuff mean anything to you? Just a place for you all to sit down and hear the gospel. That's all it means to me. Why? Because everything's going to burn with you if you're saved. Everything you see out there is going to fry. Everything you've hugged all your life is going to fry. But the souls of men can be saved. In saying that, let us read. Verse 22, In whom ye also are built. Oh, mercy. Together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells within the church to comfort the church to the image of, to conform the church to the image of God's will. The Holy Spirit needs to control the church. If the Holy Spirit is not controlling me, then I'm no benefit to the church. The Holy Spirit is always filled with love and grace and mercy. In closing, in Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 12, if, 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 if and I may. And the Bible reads just like this to Raymond and to whosoever is listening. It says, put on therefore. This don't come natural. Hateful and holding a grudge comes natural for Raymond. It didn't even come natural for me. It says, put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved vows of mercy. Vows of mercy. That, mean, that means compassion. It is beyond compare. Think about it. Kindness. Oh my Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another. I've heard people leave a local church because they just couldn't get along with somebody. <laughs> what do you do if you do go to heaven? And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Brothers and sisters, I've always did my best to say I'm sorry and be available. Some never answer the phone. Some don't want to talk. I honor that and respect that. But I still love them. And I'm still more grateful. And above all these things, above all, put on charity. That means love, sweet people. Not lust. That means love. Which is the bond of perfectness. People always want to be perfect. Put God's love in your heart and in your life. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You know what is a killing a lot of, of, of uh, pastors and people who lead in a church? They're, they're probably preaching. And they're probably practicing. And it just feels like they're beating the head against the wall. And you know what? It's easy to feel that way. And I try not to let it last no longer than five minutes. Why, Brother Raymond? Because I've still got the book. <laughs> I'm saved. I'm called to do what I do. And all I can do is put the information out, repent of my sin, and love them where they're at, and pray they admit and turn their lives towards Jesus. To the which also ye are called in one body. Hallelujah. And be ye faithful. Faithful.
full for your brothers and everybody. Let the word of God dwell, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I think a lot of things is done in local churches that Jesus really wished they would put his name on. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. When's the last time in this pandemic that you spent a whole day <laughs> just wishing it wasn't here? And when's the last time you spent a whole day trying to figure out how to talk to someone to get them to Jesus? When's the last time nobody around, maybe one of your favorite songs, nobody around but you and the Lord, and you just leaned back and said, Rough and rolling waters, cast my ship across the sea. Go ahead and cast your fury. You're not a threat to me. Cast your anger in the wild wind, your ways upon the shore. I'm sailing with the master, and we weathered storms before. We've sailed through the rain, we've sailed through the wind. Weathered tempest, we're back on course again. Man who built this vessel knows it can endure. I'm sailing with the master, and we've weathered storms before. <laughs> Brother Raymond, you ain't got a brain in your head. No, I don't, but I got Jesus in my heart. And I'd like to tell you something here today. If you're saved, and the things that I've read out of this book don't mean what it used to. Would you do yourself a favor and ask God to forgive you? He will, praise God. You know why? He ain't like you and me. He'll forgive you. Get up from there and go and tell people about the Lord and what the Lord has done and let the Lord get in it and save these people that's lost. And you'll have a new government, that's for sure, because you won't be a part of nothing around here. You'll be a part of the one that's coming. Dear soul, if you're out there, YouTube, Facebook, here at this church, and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I want you to know something. He's calling you today. He's a saying, child, you're fearfully and wonderfully made by my hand. I give you a choice. The gospel's been presented to you about ten times a day. Jesus is Lord, whether you choose to believe it or not. Believe it. Just say, Father, this is Raymond Spann. I'm a lost sinner. Would you come into my heart and save my soul? I believe you died for me, rose again. And I believe you're coming back. In Jesus' name, amen. Use your name, though. I just want to give you an illustration. I'm going to humble my heart here to the Lord. And ask God to forgive me if I did say something that's wrong scripturally. Because I would never do anything to lead you astray intentionally. I promise you that. I'll repent right now. But listen. Someday you will answer before God. And the information is from Genesis to Revelation. How you, Raymond Spann, are to live your life. Church, are you the church or are you not? It's a yes and no question. Your fruit shows it. Your fruit shows it. I pray your fruit is ready. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I come to you right now as humbly as I know how. And Lord, I said a lot of things today. I hope I said them right. But Father, if I did not, I ask you to forgive me right now if I said something that's amiss. But Father, magnify your word in the hearts of these dear people. I love them. I thank God I'm here at this local church. I pray to God that they'll be strengthened by the word of God and, and, and my, and my uh, encouragement to them. And Father, I, I'm thankful that, that, that nobody's afraid to call me even if they mess up because I'm going to go to the Lord and then we're going to try to get it right. And Father God, help me to always stand up for what you say. Help me to do that in my life. Father God, they... they Maybe somebody out there has never received Jesus. Let them come right now and be saved. 
Father, there might be somebody out there that's never told nobody about Jesus, and they're saved. Father, let them learn how to do it, just to go do it. Give them strength. And Father, in this sickness, these that I know that is so terribly sick, I pray for them. I pray for their families. Help bind it from people and help them not to get it. Lord, we pray for a cure. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'll be right out. If you need me, you're welcome to come.